That's good. Well, I appreciate this opportunity. And uh, even as I was talking to Joel yesterday, I, I, I said, well, I don't know if everyone blogs. Like, they really, I, like, my, my, I wanted to say, if you don't care about blogging, then just go check out the offers on the youth market. But uh, he's like, no, no, we've all, we've all got a story, right? Like, we've all got a platform. We've all got something that we're, we're trying to grow. We've got a story that we, uh, I think that we need to share, and, and we should be sharing as best we possibly can. So uh, I do want to focus specifically on um, blogging in the sense that that's, that that's what I do, um, but I think that the, the principles apply across the board to, to whatever you're doing. Um, I, I have a few things that I want to go through, maybe uh, alleviate some concerns, some some. Some of the most frequent questions that I get asked, but I'm not going to go into detail on the questions. I'll leave that up to you. So I'm thinking maybe half hour, 35 minutes. Or I, I don't know. I got a time in my head of what I have, and then let's just go anywhere you want to go. And I don't consider myself the expert in the room. There's other people that can that can answer questions, but if you have some specific ones, then let's let's go down the road. But how about we do this? Um, uh, think of one person in your life, maybe you wrote it on your, uh, one of your eight squares yesterday, who has influenced you in a way uh, significantly, but you've never met them. So maybe it was, it was writing, speaking, video. Uh, who, who was it? Just give me the names. I don't, I don't need to know what they did for you. I mean, come on. No time for all that. But just give me uh, <laughs> well, we're gonna get into that later. But just give me the name of somebody you've never met that has influenced your life significantly. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, yeah. Wonderful. Dean Dwyer. Dean Dwyer. Lori Anderson. Lori Anderson. Megan Johnson. Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar. Stephen Cumming. Stephen Cumming. Scott Dinsworm. Oh, Scott Dinsworm? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Seth Godin. Seth Godin. Mm -hmm. Stephen Pressfield. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. Andy Andrews. Andy Andrews. How many had written down a name on their sheet yesterday of someone that they had never met? A few of you? Yeah, I had a name that um, I met later in life, but I would have um, cared, mentioned his influence before I met him. So obviously we have opportunity. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to, to make a difference in uh, certainly the world we live in provides us this opportunity to, to get out there and to have this platform and to speak to people, uh, whether it's blogging, podcasting, um, kid stories. Um, uh, movies, video, film, whatever, whatever you're working on. Uh, I want to. I th thought uh, I had maybe three thoughts, maybe three main key steps to, to blogging, which you can take to every way that, that you want to do. Uh, three thoughts I think have to be essential in any blog that wants to grow, in one, any way that we want to expand our influence. So let me let me run through them and, and highlight a few key points under um, each of them. Number one. I think the key to uh, a strong blog, uh, growing your platform, is to write, write, write. <laughs> so write and write some more and write some more after that. Uh, record your podcast, record your podcast, record your podcast. Make your video, make your YouTube video, make another one, make another one. There's just no way to do it without actually doing the work. Now, some concerns that people have, and I've even heard them uh, over the course of this weekend. Number one, uh, people are already writing about my topic. So this is a, a common, what am I going to say that someone else isn't already saying? And man, I, I gotta tell you, um, uh, there's a thousand people writing about every, every, every topic. There, there are no shortage of paleo diet blogs. There's no shortage of simple living <coughs> Blog. There's no shortage of uh, habits and um, and whatever diets, whatever it might be. Okay, there are people writing about it, and this is good for a number of reasons. Number one, you always bring a different voice into the conversation. Uh, the way that you write, the way what what marks the culture that you're creating is always going to look different from someone else. You're always building a unique uh, audience, so you're starting with a unique community, and you're going to build your own unique community. Number three, the benefits are going to be for more than the other person. The benefits are going to be for you as well. Uh, I think that uh, early on when I was writing, even when there weren't very many people reading, uh, I was discovering the benefits that I was finding just by writing, uh, being more intentional in my life, uh, thinking through things. So when I started becoming minimalist, I wrote every single day. Um, a, a guy named Josh Griffin was a blogger that I followed, and he posted like one or two or three times a day. 
And so I thought that's how I'm supposed to do it. So if you go back, my, like my first thing, it was, I was writing like every single day, sometimes twice a day, and they were like two or three uh, sentences long. Um, but, <laughs> but I was writing about minimalism, and I found myself looking for things to write about, like just studying my life and looking for new things and new ways I was experiencing, thoughts that I was having, benefits that I was discovering by owning less stuff. And I'll never forget the day, I was, um, it was late in the day and I hadn't put up a blog post and so I don't know, I went to msn.com or something and I, I found this, an article for, it was the, I don't know, the year 20, 2009 maybe, 2009 fall Pantone color palette for fashion for the fall. I'm like, what is this? So. I click on it and, and here are all the colors that were going to be popular for fall 2009. And I just, I just had this simple question, who, <laughs> and when you decide what, what colors are going to be popular, and then I thought, you know, if I was in the fashion industry, it would sure be helpful for me if I could change the popular color every single season so that people had to buy new clothes to match whatever the color was. And this was like a light bulb moment for me, just picturing you know, commercialization and, and picturing the fashion industry, picturing so many of our industries that, that just have this planned obsolescence. And it came out of a day where I didn't know what I was gonna write about, and so I was just Googling, looking for things, and this happened to pop up. So I think there's great benefit to us in writing and in blogging. You don't have to write every day, I, I long since gave that up. Um, but uh, maybe, that, maybe that works for you. But there's benefit for us was the point I was trying to make. Uh, and then here's the other thing. Uh, when, we, when we get into a, a topic, we want to write about whatever the topic is. We always think to ourselves, well, someone's already writing it better. right? Not only am I not the only one, there's already people writing it. There's people who are writing it so much better than I was. And so Leo, the Bota Zen Habits, was one of the circle, the squares that I wrote down. He's, probably shape my blogging um, culture more than anyone else. And I remember getting on there, I'm like, oh, gosh, he's writing about, he's like years down the road. Like he's writing about stuff far more experienced than I ever would. What would I ever have to add to the conversation? Well, I didn't have a lot to add at, the, at, the, at that moment. But after a couple of six months, after a year of writing about it, you start to grow in this. And this is where you find your experience by being involved in it and by writing. And suddenly you start discovering things that you didn't know you had to discover. And you start writing about things that are kind of advanced, you know, just advanced thoughts in what you're doing. Um, so let me encourage you that even if someone else is doing it, it doesn't matter. We, we still need you and we still need uh, your voice. So please do it. Uh, a second concern that people have is that they're going to run out of things to talk about. Uh, I think this is very common. I, I still think that every post is the last one that I'm going <laughs> to, the last idea, I'm like, did I already write this? <laughs> Probably did, but, um, <laughs> but uh, there are, and I, I used to say it this way, I say when you pick your theme, when you pick your topic, when you, when you pick whatever it is that you want to write about, the, the, the change that you want to make, the difference that you want to create, you write about whatever it is, but then you begin to um, discover the fringes. Like you start to discover what's around the topic that you were writing about. So I was writing about minimalism and owning less. And my first couple of years, I was just writing about my own personal journey and, and getting rid of some things. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is bringing up like generosity. And, and this is bringing up issues of gratitude and, I start, and, and scheduling. And like I started here, but all these other things started popping up. And I, I used to say, that I was just exploring the fringes of whatever topic I was. But then yesterday evening, we were over at uh, Anthony's house, and uh, he said, oh, let me show you this one thing that someone taught me. It's a genius. And it really is. So I'm going to have him come down here. Anthony's going to come down. And, uh, and I wanted to do this short little exercise on this topic of, but I'm going to run out of things to talk about. Because he lays out so clearly how Man, we, we don't, we're not going to run out of things to, to write about. So go ahead, Anthony. Yeah. I don't know where you got it. Thank I, you. If you um, deserve credit. Maybe they've all done it. I don't I, know. I didn't but. come up with this. Um, so it, this is kind of like a concept. Uh, hello again, everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. Um, 
So this is a concept um, that, that I came across from Darren Rose, who's, who does Pro Blogger, and, and it's a, just an awesome idea. So I'd heard that there was going to be, uh, I think you were starting a, a, a blog or something, so I'd love to use an example that might be helpful or to, to anyone, I don't know. Um, but so, so if you're interested in starting a blog right now, maybe I'll just open it up. Uh, who might like to, to do this with me here? Sure. Awesome. Oh. That's easy. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, you, you can sit there or, or here, whatever you want to do. You know, to them. Okay. Um, so, all right. So, what this is is a way to come up with content ideas. And here's a, a big thing: don't try to do it alone. Um, managing social media accounts, things like that, it gets really hard to come up with content by yourself all year. It's like, oh yeah, be innovative and creative just every day all year to, to get people engaged and it's, it's, it's hard. So use your, your network, use people um, around you, even people that don't, don't know or are experts in your area. So um, your, your site. Um, what is the, oh, what's like the encompassing topic? Okay, it is enoughist.com mm -hmm. and it is going to be about exploring like how we get socialized into thinking all the things that we think we should have, that we should want, that we should be, cutting out and then focusing, it, self awareness, focusing on what's important to you, self -awareness, cutting out the great. excess to focus on what's going to create meaning in your life. Perfect. So I'm going to say, I like that you said self-awareness. Okay, so here's the core concept. So immediately, there are things that you can write about. Um, so what's one thing that you might write about about self-awareness? Just like one topic. Um, meditation. Being afraid of what's going on in your own mind. We had a nice discussion last night. <laughs> uh, uh, so, okay. Yep, so fear of, um, I'll just say minds for time purposes. All right, so within the fear of your mind, what are some different things that you could be fearful about? Anyone, actually? Failure. Failure. Success. What was that second one? Success. Success. Criticism. <laughs> yeah, expectation. Yeah, disappointing. Hurting someone. Expectations. Within expectations, what are some of the expectations in life as an adult or as a young person or anything that you might come across? Sorry? Parenthood. Home ownership. <laughs> Home ownership. What else? Neighbors. Neighbors. Um, all right. I, right. Um, so this is, we, we just like blew up one category, right? So let's jump back out really quick. I, I'll, I'll end quickly because I think no, the, point, great. the point is happening. <laughs> um, so let's just do another, let's jump back up. Under self, self-awareness, self what's another way you can be self-aware? Anyone around? It's a meditation, I think that's a good one. Meditation. So under meditation, what are some different ways you can meditate? Meditation. Meditation. Running. Running. Gonna be meditation. Exercise. Being. Being Music. Present. Sorry. Being present in the moment. Yep. I'm a fan of 45 minute long baths. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that under treat yourself. <laughs> It, so I, I think it, use your network, use your friends, your people, because they're going to be the ones that are wanting to know more about what you're doing, and they're going to be the ones asking questions. Yeah. I just wanted to add, based off of this, some advice that I think is helpful. When I first started blogging, I thought that, like, okay, I have to take that fear of mind category, and I have to write the completed essay that touches on mm. all of those subcategories. You don't have to do that in blogging. Each one of those branches could be its own post. It doesn't have to be like a dissertation. Um, and it shouldn't be. I got one up here really quick. Yep. I just say, I'm a secondary school English teacher. We use this every single day. It's awesome. mind wrapping to come up with thesis topics, to come up with yep. theme setting, characterization, da da da. This is used all the time if you ever want to look it up. Google mind mapping. It's also more right brain. 
for you? Yeah. So the linear thing we do, we get our task list, okay, topics to write about, and we just kind of go down, mm -hmm. and then you get to about Just Google Maya. Oh, okay. A straight, <laughs> simple Maya. You will lose your mind. It's fantastic. Yeah, the other thing about, um, like, uh, being intimidated by like the the giant list is like you will never write everything that there is to write about that one topic, right? And that's totally okay. Like with as fast as information is coming out, like you could think that you got it all down. And then like tomorrow there's new information about it. And your like comprehensive encyclopedia of fear of fear of the mind <laughs> is like incomplete again. Right. So like get over this idea that it has to be perfect because it's never going to be and that's okay like it's it's going to be good enough and it's going to be ah, well so played many people it's going to be enough yeah yeah <laughs> thank you thank you Oh, he, uh, that, say, yes. that was a revelation of simplicity. Outsourcing your simplicity talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I, I literally, like, the only wording I've ever had is you just learn to explore the fringe of your topic. <laughs> and then he did that, and I'm like, oh, that explains so much better. What, I, <laughs> what, what does that mean, fringe? Uh, whoever you stole that from, I'm stealing from you. So. <laughs> It's just like I'm stealing the eight names on your sheet of paper. Um, so a, a couple concerns. Number one, uh, and some people are already writing about it. As we've already heard said, not everything's been explored. Not everything about failure has been written that needs to be written. And certainly not in the voice that you're going to add with the story that you're going to add to it to your community. So uh, let's be bold. But maybe you know, if you've been doubting if you're ever going to start on something, maybe this was enough just to say, okay, this this is something that I can do and something that I can start. Now, beyond having um, you know, thinking through the, the topic, there is, and there's no way around blogging specifically. There is just the discipline of writing, and as far as I can tell from any writer that I've ever talked to, it is never pretty. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had, uh, maybe a few, maybe a very small handful of people who have said that they really enjoy sitting down to write. Like even the, the most intense authors, the most prolific authors will tell you, you still just have to sit down in the chair and you need to write stuff down. Uh, this, is, this is difficult, this takes time, you get better at it. Uh, if you are not a good writer today, there's a chance that you never will be a good writer. So I, I'll start with that encouragement. <laughs> but no, I, I'm serious about that. I'm never going to be a, a starting quarterback in the NFL. I'm never going to start even for a high school football team, right? Like, I just don't throw a football that well, and I, I don't think anyone can learn. It's just not a natural skill for me. Um, I, I think that you don't know if you're a good writer until you actually sit down and start to write. You don't know if you're a good football player until you actually play football. Maybe you pick it up and you're like, I do like this more than I thought. So don't say I'm not a good writer if you haven't sat down and took the time to learn how to write. If you don't want to become a writer, then you don't have to, certainly. But if you want to be a writer but you don't think you're good at it, you've got to give yourself time and you've got to learn you got to learn just the, the discipline and the craft of what works best for me and when do I work best in the day, uh, how long do I like to write, what does the editing process look for me. It, it takes time. It takes, I'm still learning, right? Years later, I'm still learning. So uh, don't be afraid of, of that if that's something that you want to become. Um, the other thing is uh, when, when, we, when we blog, this is one of the earliest lessons that, that I learned, um, and I, I think it was a, um, uh, someone used the phrase me-centered writing versus you-centered writing. Um, so when I started my first year and a half, almost two years of, of writing, you can go back through my old stuff, and it's crummy. Um, but uh, it, it was all me-centered, and that was okay. Uh, that's what I wanted to be writing at the time. It was very much a journal for me of what I was learning and what I was doing um, and what I was going through, the rooms I was going through, the emotions I was experiencing, the quotes that I was finding, the Pantone fashion reports that I was running into. <laughs> like it was very much just personal exploration of the things that I was learning. But I wrote a uh, post on belts uh, about a year and a half, two years into it. Uh, I wrote a post on belts and I remember the title, belts, question mark, why didn't I think of that? And, uh, <laughs> Like the five or six belts that I'd gotten rid of out of my closet. 
And I'm like, what is this dribble? <laughs> what is this nonsense? I'm writing about, I'm writing about belts. Uh, meanwhile, there are a few people reading the blog, following the story, and I'm starting to get some emails. I'm starting to get a few comments and a few questions about one of the most common ones, and it still is to this day, is what do I do about my partner who doesn't want to minimize anything? What do I do about my partner? And I had learned some things over two and a half, two, two years with my wife. And, and, and so I sat down. I'm like, I'm going to try and answer this question for somebody. And so I sat down. And it took much longer than belts. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> right? I had to think, okay, so here's where my wife and I disagree. Here's where we agree. Here's where we disagree. How do we handle that? What worked well? What didn't work well? And scribbled four or five different principles down and became what to... Um, uh, what to do, uh, how to become a minimalist when your partner isn't, something like that. And uh, I posted it, and immediately there were like two or three or four times as many comments on this post as ever before. There's like a discussion starting underneath it. And this is a light bulb moment that probably most of you have already had, but it took me years to figure out. I've just been writing for, for me, but I can be writing for someone else. And so I had to decide at that moment who was going to be my readers. Who was I going to write for? Was I going to write for people who were minimalist already and they own 100 things and I want to help them get to 50 things? Like, no, because I'm not even down to 100 things. My own. Uh, I, I just looked at my story. I'm like, well, I'm living in the suburbs. My neighbor introduces me to minimalism. I, it solves so many of my problems. That's who I want to write for. I want to write for the family in the suburbs that's never heard the term minimalism. And so to this day, like that's, that's who I sit down to write to. So it's you-centered, so I write for them, but it's in my voice. So I write for others, but in my voice. Uh, which is a, a big phrasing in writing. Okay, you gotta find your voice. And there's no way to find it except to go looking for it. Uh, we, we don't know what our writing voice is going to be, but here's how I might try to define it. When you think of that name of the person that you had come to your mind that has influenced your life, and can you give me three words that describe their writing? Fun. They spoke with three, fun, okay? Encouraging. Yeah, encouraging. Authentic. I think you start writing these down. Authentic. Okay. Just no. What's that? Simple. Simple. Okay. Engaging. Sarcastic. Engaging. Sarcastic. Nice Insightful. one. What's that? Insightful. Insightful. Okay. Common sense. Common sense. Mm -hmm. Wise. Uh, what's that? Wise. Wise. I said lies. <laughs> <laughs> right. That like a, a writer who who's found their voice. You can pick out the adjectives that describe who they are, and so I had to put together a book proposal, and I had to write out my, define my writing style. I'm like, okay, what adjectives describe how I write and how I do it well? Uh, there was a, when I first got into minimalism, there was a writer named Everett Bogue. Does anyone know? Anyone know yeah. Yeah. Ever, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, Everett Bogue had like the complete opposite writing style that, that I did. He was brash and he was mean and I, I, just remember one of, I just remember one of his most popular posts ever came out on uh, it was Black Friday 2010 I don't know I, like I remember the day and, uh, and his first sentence was um, hi my name is Everett Bogue and I think you're an idiot <laughs> and, then, and then the next sentence to start a second paragraph is because this blog post is going to go viral let me introduce myself <laughs> and he went on to introduce himself and then he wrote this big blog post about Christmas gifts and the tradition and, and um, how we should be buying gifts we should be buying, buying experiences and sure enough the blog post goes viral and like people are running to, to, to read it and he like every article was I think you're an idiot you have a television, go throw it off your roof. Like just very, <laughs> like very bold statements. Um, um, you know who's real popular now that does it is uh, Matt Walsh. He's kind of a conservative blogger, right? Like he's just in your face. You're an idiot for believing these things. And I, I cannot do that. <laughs> like, I cannot write in that style whatsoever. And so I sit down to write a controversial 
topic. Like where I want to be really in your face, shine the light on something that's wrong about everyone. I write it, and like the first comment is, hey, thanks for the helpful reminder. <laughs> so encouraging. To I'm like, oh, jeez, I can't even write in that, in that voice. But this is good, because Everett reaches people that I never could have reached, and I reach people that are never going to turn off, I'm always going to turn off Everett, and are never going to read past the first paragraph. See, but we got to, you find your voice, you find your time, and uh, you know, if you flip through my old stuff, I, I write far different today than I did six years ago, thankfully so, but this, this takes time learning, uh, learning this craft. Um, uh, real quick, more on, on writing. Um, uh, give your best stuff away. Uh, I think this is one that, that, uh, that was a very much a tendency of mine going into it. Of okay, what am I going to hold back? You know, what am I going to hold back for the book? Whatever it is, I'm like, no, no. Just put everything you've got out there. Like, put your best stuff. Put your best stuff for us. Talking to a guy who um, mentors young adults, and you want to write a book, you want to have a blog, like a blog to go along with it, and. It's like, so what do I know to, to keep, I'm like, put the whole blog, put the whole book on the blog. Like, just, just write the whole thing out. You're going to find people who, that's how you become a trusted voice in that field and in that industry is by putting out your best material, not holding anything back. You're not going to run out of things. You're always going to find more things. And the more you put stuff out there, the deeper you're going to go into whatever it is that you're writing about. Um, so I'm writing a book about minimalism right now. <laughs> Believe it or not, um, uh, for uh, for a publisher, so I'm, I'm actually leaving today to go hang out at a cabin for a week and we'll see how much of that I can, I can get rid of. But uh, uh, we went to all these publishers with these book proposals of a book that we wanted to write, and they, they kept saying, write a book about minimalism. I'm like, I already did. <laughs> like, time. Let's just change it. Let's just change the title. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's all the same. But I really need, to, and, and they're like, yes, like write the book. Like, like you've written about it for six years now. And, and they're like, the country hasn't heard the term. Like you're around it, so you think everyone knows it. But, but the country hasn't been introduced to the idea, not in a, in a very broad um, media, like just a very broad way. And so it just takes six years of what you've written. And like as soon as they said it, I'm like, oh gosh, Simplify came out after two years of doing this, and man, I know so much more now than I knew back then, and different questions, and better answers, and what people are asking about it. Mm -hmm. I can write a much better book than I did way back then. So uh, give your best stuff away, and um, uh, certainly you get better. So number one, write, write, write. That's it for number one. Write, write, write. Uh, number two, then uh, connect, connect, connect. And I like to think of it this way, especially if you're just getting started. The best way, one of the, the best ways, well, picture this. So I've got a network of simple living people, right? Like I've got a network of people who are interested in, in minimalism and, and owning less and overcoming consumerism and, and can kind of see that. So you're starting out and you're just writing about it. Well, try to connect with me. Like try to connect with someone who already has a network of people that are following whatever it is that you're writing about and hope that that person will introduce you to their readers. Uh, do they always? Not always, but just personally speaking, I'm always looking for new content. I mean, I, I feel like I gotta put something out on Twitter two or three times or four times a day. Like, I don't know how many times I sit down, like, well, who's written a good article about minimalism that I can tweet out and <coughs> get, a little, get a little quiet on Twitter? What can I, what can I, I got a newsletter coming out next week. What's been written in the past couple of weeks that, that's, that's really good? Like, I'm always looking for people to promote and, and people to, to send people to. Um, so, so take advantage of that and, and look to connect with people. And of course, you do this just the tried and true ways, right? Um, social media, right? So be promoting other people, be connecting on social media. Uh, some people do this amazingly well. I have, um, just to give you a, a frame of reference, when I was, uh, um, when I had like 15,000 Twitter followers, I, I used to tell people, I said, I see every tweet that mentions me, and I'm, I'm maybe on twice a day, and I see every single person that mentions who I am, because I'm a human. So, like, of course, I'm, 
course I'm clicking on connect to see who mentioned me and, and what they're saying to me. And like that's a pretty substantial following. And I think sometimes we look at people who have 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000 are like, well, they're never going to see what I write. They probably get hundreds and hundreds of mentions a day. They don't. They really don't. <laughs> they might not answer, right? And depending on how you catch them at any given time, but they'll notice you. And if you start tweeting out their, their articles three or four times, like your, your picture, if you're not changing your picture and it's not an egg, then <laughs> Change that, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> like, they'll register, you'll, uh, you'll, they'll start to notice you, and then the next day ask a question, and, and um, you connect with people. So, so please, and think that through. Uh, Twitter's way better than, than Facebook for that, so um, just so you know. Uh, number two, um, obviously, um, social media, email. Do send emails to people. I, mean, I, I open every piece of email that, that I get. I, I laugh when they say, um, you know, Joshua or whoever opens his email. <laughs> I read them all. And you know what? If someone sends me an email with an article that they wrote, I bet 90% of the time I click through to read it. Um, I, I do. I'm, I'm interested. I want, hey, I wrote a really good article. I think you'll like it. Hey, I mentioned your name in my article. Like, that helps you. <laughs> sure, I'm clicking through to, to read it. Then when I click through, then I have the decision, is this something I'm going to send out to other people or do I feel like it needs some work, right? Like, like I get to make that decision if I'm sending it out to people. But for what it's worth, I, I, I read every email and if you send me a post, I'll click through it and, and I'll read it. And, and I'm always looking for, for good material and I'm not alone in that. So be bold in connecting with other people. I, I don't know how to define the <coughs> gift in this way. Some people do it better than others and I, I've looked through like the emails, the someone who randomly said they want a guest post, and I actually said yes as opposed to no, I invitation only. And I, I try to find how did they phrase things that connected with me compared to the way this person did. And I, I don't know what it is other than there are some people who just have a knack. Uh, you, Mr. Moreau, have a knack for, and you always know, send out the tweet about the, like the ice bucket challenge or whatever it is. And, Sent out a couple other times, and I'm actually really interested in this guy. Just something about the way. It's the French thing. I don't, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but, uh, but man, find out if you're good at that. Uh, be bold and send some emails to, to people. Um, and, and maybe you don't have to gun for the, uh, the, the highest guy, right? If you're starting about simple living, don't run, you know, don't, oh, I need to get on this guy's radar, but start. You know, who's a little bit ahead of you, who has a bigger audience than you do? Connect with them, and then, except for yeah. JFZ. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, when we first started the blog, that's what our dream was. And I wrote a, a post, and the same thing. I was like, oh, this is really good. I should keep it. But I found uh, Simple Life Together, and I emailed it to Daniel. And you guys were the first ones that <laughs> you agreed to post it. And when I got your email, I almost started crying. And I jumped up and down. And I'm like, oh, they're going to post it. They're going to post it. <laughs> That just started it all for us, and thank you so much, Maria. You have no idea how excited we were. I called my mom. I called my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I had to help me edit it, and she was just over the moon. And so, like, you don't know the gift that that can be. Oh, well, you know, we talked about last night. Rising tide raises all ships. That type of thing. That's the yeah. kind of attitude they have in this business. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Which is going to go to my next point. So, email, social media, and then links. Like, link out from your blog. And I don't know if I'm alone in this, but when I first started. I was so nervous to link out to Leo's writing. I was so nervous to link out to someone else. And here was my thought process. Once they find out that he's writing about this stuff a thousand times better than me, then they're never going to come back to read what I'm writing. And this was the thought process. Uh, but it, but it, it, it changed quickly because the thinking is, should be that way. The thinking should be, hey, Joshua just introduced me to this fantastic writer, who else is Joshua going to introduce me to? You know, who else is going to, uh, who else is he going to connect me with other people? And, uh, and these referrals, like they pop up on people's WordPress stat. I don't know if you use WordPress or not, but I mean, anytime you check your stats on WordPress, which bloggers do, don't let anyone tell you that they're not checking their stats, because <laughs> they are. Um, 
I checked it four times a day. <laughs> like they're checking. And so just to give you a frame of reference, a little bit like with the with the Twitter numbers. So literally September was our biggest month ever, 1.5 million uh, page views. And uh, I, does that count spam? I, spam bots? <laughs> It's very exciting, but uh, but I, I just did I just checked it um, so I can come up here last so it'll show me like my top ten refers the bottom one on my list was forty five like forty five clicks from someone showed up on I mean a pretty good size blog it's still registering right away and if there's a new site on there that I mean if I was getting you know a third of that five hundred thousand so you know somebody sent 15 clicks over on any I mean you can do that yourself and you just pop up and if it's brand new I've never heard it before I'm clicking through mm -hmm. oh this is interesting I wonder what they're I wonder what they're writing about now they, they gotta find something good when they get there certainly uh, but uh, you can pop up on people's radar probably a, a lot easier than, than you think that you can so um, Roundup posts are another way to do that. I started doing that every uh, every two weeks. Just you know, I hear some weekend links. Um, um, I do that every two weeks. So that's another way just to, to pop up and, and to be become known by different people. Uh, Where do you get all your photos of the coffee? They're always changing. Uh, well, I started reusing some, so I'm glad to hear that you uh, haven't noticed that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I need more details about that. Uh, Pixabay is a, a website that I like, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Uh, they have a lot of um, free photos that are sortable. And then unsplash.com. But now everyone uses Unsplash. So once you start using them, you'll, you'll notice them. What was the first one you said? Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Uh, let me make my last comment and then any, any questions. Uh, so number one, you got to write, write, write. Number two, connect, connect, connect. And then number three, persevere. Persevere, uh, persevere. Um, I quit blogging uh, one time. I started in uh, May 2008, so this has been a six and a half year uh, process for me. So some people do it quicker, some people are really good at it. I wasn't, uh, it took me a long time. May 2008, I quit in uh, January 2009 and February 2009, so for two months I quit. I, uh, I maybe posted once a month, something like that, and go back and look. Plus it added my views, so that'd be great. Uh, and I, I, I heard an I heard a advertisement about donating prom dresses, so I just, hey, here's an interesting thing about donating prom dresses, I never thought of that before. And someone left a comment, and I said, Josh, where have you been? Please come back. And I, I was like, well, I didn't think anyone was, was reading, which, by the way, Writing becomes a lot more fun when people are reading it. Uh, like, like that's the case, but you can't get to the part of people reading it without doing the writing and persevering and learning your voice to get to that point. Um, but it, it gets better and it gets more fun when you know that, that people are reading it. And they said, please come back. And my like, God, oh, I didn't know that I was actually having a difference in people's lives. I didn't know that I was really making uh, making a difference. And so I pushed through. Like I pushed through that moment of, of wanting to stop. Changed my habits a little bit. Stopped posting every day. Went to, went to three times a week for a long time. Eventually went down to about two times a week. I began writing for a project. Uh, I began writing for a book that, that I wanted to write. This is from Everett Bogue, by the way. I'll just tell a story because I think it's entertaining. Um, so it was a, a Super Bowl weekend, Friday of Super Bowl weekend. We were painting our basement because we were having a party on Saturday, on Sunday. So go ahead, Friday evening, painting for a party on Sunday. Um, and uh, and I hadn't written anything that day. I saw that Everett somehow. He, I think I searched minimalism. It popped up that he had written a book. And so I'm like, who is this guy? He's like 23. He's like a jerk. <laughs> he was writing. Everything I could tell. He's like he's been writing for like six months, and he's written this book already. I'm like, how is this even possible? And then, like a few later, bit later, he wrote a post on how I wrote an ebook in six months. And he said, basically, I just wrote the book on the website. I just each blog post became a part of the book. I'm like, well, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> I already have a book written from two years. Worth this up, so it became our first book, Simplify, which came out three weeks later. If you check the date, <laughs> <laughs> my book came out three weeks later. 
it came out. But immediately from there, like it became, okay, I know what, I, I, I knew what the next book was that I wanted to write. And so I just began writing it on the blog and, and working it through. Like it makes the material better because you catch blind spots when people comment and you find which post really resonates with people and what, what phrasing catches people. And so it makes your book better. And I, I don't think you're a sellout when you put the book together. It's packaged differently. It's a, 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 a nice um, format. You've got it outlined differently than just the stream of consciousness that you were writing before. It becomes a, a better product. So write for a project. I think you'll find that to be very helpful in this persevering. Uh, you'll gain an audience from the people that you, uh, that you want to be following. And then uh, begin testing. Right, just test out what works well for you, not just in writing style, but in social media, finding people to, 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 to um, find out. So Facebook works really well for me. People hate Facebook, and I, I hate it when they make fun of it because it's like my, my cash cow. Like, like all my traffic comes from, so much of it comes from Facebook, and it just works well for me. I've tried to help other people through it, and this is what I do. And I'm like, it doesn't work for me. I'm like, well, I go do something else. But Facebook works for me. I, Facebook works a lot better than Pinterest does for me, than Twitter does for me, than YouTube does for me. But find what works good for you and, and run at it and learn it and, and, and do as, as best you can uh, with it. Last, uh, last comment um, came from um, Anne Lamont at a conference I was at where, where she was speaking. I don't know. I won't do the whole story. Um, I'll lose a little bit in it. But she was up front, and, uh, and she just made a, a, a genius comment that was so true. And she said, if, if you ever think writing is going to fulfill your need, if you ever think you're going to find enough respect, if you think you're going to find enough fame, if you think you're going to find enough money, if you think you're going to find enough traffic, if you think you're ever going to reach that point from writing, you're never going to. Like you're just not gonna find your fulfillment in the metrics of what you're hoping what you're hoping to accomplish. And so like my traffic goes up every month, but it's like, oh, you know what would be fun? If I could get to two million pages. Or I remember reaching twenty five thousand Facebook fans like, oh, awesome. I can't wait till I get to fifty. I can't wait till I get to a hundred. Right? Like we always you can't get enough of the wrong thing. You never find fulfillment in enough of the stuff that's never going to provide it for you. You're going to have to find it elsewhere. So, so don't be searching for those things in there. You can find your significance in right. Not significance in that I'm helping people. I'm finding fulfillment in helping people, but not in the metrics that so many people just use to uh, to define success. So, there you go. Those are just my thoughts on uh, on blogging. Uh, things that I've learned. Things I wish I would have picked up along the way. Let's do uh, questions or thoughts from from anyone. Uh, what would you say, in your opinion, is pre is a predominant motive for people to blog? I don't blog. See, I'm curious about. It. Yeah, and I I should mention that I don't, I don't think people have to blog. Like my grandpa has this like this amazing reach of people, and he's 93, and he's never going to blog. And I would never tell him to. Like what he's doing now is is making a difference and is reaching people and is changing people's lives. And I'm like, don't even think about blogging or Facebook because you don't. You don't need to do that. So I mean, there's a lot of motivations that well, see, people most have. The, most of the writing I do is to help people change their lives and improve <coughs> the quality of their lives. And I, I don't know how the blog would help that. Yeah, right. So I, I mean, other than they blog. Yeah, I mean, it make it more accessible, I suppose, to some people. But I mean, if you're already reaching people with the way that you're you're writing and, and it's getting in the hands of people, then I won't I won't bother and blogging if you don't need to. to. The community, huh? when people find that someone like it. Yeah, but I'm already so involved with people. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. Then yeah. You know. no. I'm from the Depression. We looked at each other. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you this whole time. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I wanted to touch on two comments about the kind of blog to book thing because this is something I've done, well, uh, four out of five times now. Um, a couple of things. Number one, who here has bought a best of album of a, of a band that you already, yes. already have, like maybe several of the, their albums? Yes? Yeah, absolutely. This is the reason why you should go through your archives, find the best stuff, organize it for people, package it up, put it into an ebook, and put a price on that. Mm -hmm. People will not go through your archives if someone's just discovered you and they're a big fan of your work already and they've read for maybe two months. 
they're not ever going to go back through your archives and kind of try to dig through to find <coughs> other stuff. They will easily buy a $5 ebook with you having done that work for them already and be thankful for that. Think they got a big bargain and you'll be able to sell those literally several a day. And that stuff scales, it adds up, I can tell you. I've made thousands that way. Second um, is if you start a blog post and you find, uh, you know, this is a subject I know a lot about, I'm passionate about, I'm deep into it, I've written a thousand words on this, let me see if, I, if I've got more to say on this. Now I'm at 1,500, oh, hmm, okay, I still think I have more to say on this. At that point, stop <laughs> posting it to the blog, or, you know, maybe, maybe you do. This is what I did. I started writing a, a what I call a living post where I, it was a particular subject I felt I had a lot to say on. I had started, boom, 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 boom. Suddenly I realized, oh my gosh, this could be an ebook, not like a huge ebook. This is maybe 10,000 words, 15,000 words, but that's something I could sell for, for five bucks. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to write the rest of this as an ebook. And one of the things I, I do is ebooks are software. And like all software, you can issue updates. And so, as I have more to say on the subject, those people who have purchased the ebook, I published a, an update to the book. It's got a change log and everything. Say, so delete the one you have, here's the new one. There's three more chapters here. It's an ongoing blog post, essentially. You know, I get, uh, just to add <coughs> even to it, you know, so what was a big turning point for you? I get asked, and uh, number one, Leo uh, sent a link over to my site one, mm -hmm. one summer evening. Uh, and the, so I, I, I credit that. And the second thing I credit is when I put the book out, because mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it adds it adds credibility, right? Um, it, I'm the author, author of this author, book. And author, yeah. I like to say most people don't know how easy it is. <laughs> and anyone can say that they wrote a book, right? Um, like, uh, but but legitimately, <laughs> if the book is good, they'll they'll find you through it and, and become say this is a packaged material. Like this is a thoughtful blog that I'm I'm thinking how to help people with what I'm doing, and it adds. Uh, much credibility to it. I always credit it as being uh, a huge thing for me. Uh, a bunch of them. I don't even know where to start. Hey, Mindy, Let's go with my high five partner, Mindy. Well, on on those topics too, I would offer that if you've got a lot of posts on a particular topic and you want to put it into a book, or even if you just have a lot of thoughts and you you don't know where to start, or you feel like I've got all these thoughts but they're not structured. It is sometimes worth it to spend a little time with a developmental editor. Mm -hmm. um, I offer that not just because that's that's one of the things I do, but like Joel's got a really great person that he works with, and you think about it like the idea of architecture, where you're working with somebody, and your person very specifically uses those terms, which I love. <coughs> um, is that they that if you work with somebody who can help you put some structure around it and make it a really strong foundation, then you can go and write based off of that structure, um, and it can it can help it can help you see your thoughts in a different way. I think I think it's very useful um, just to spend a little bit of time, even just a couple hours, working with somebody to help you put a structure around it. Just um, it, it can be useful, and then it can also give your, your purchasers, your readers, a little extra content that wasn't already on your site. Yeah, sure. And I should mention, like, any of these topics, like, you can go, like, I don't talk about how to write, you know, how to learn writing. Like, you, you study that, and how to do books, and what's the best, like, these are all separate, <laughs> hour-long. Well, hour -long you know, I've just started this whole process in January, and the, the thing, and for anybody who else is starting, thinking about starting, my two words of wisdom is, people are a lot more generous than we give them credit for. That I reached out to people that I thought would never return my emails, they return my emails, they've agreed to be on my show, they've done, I mean I just, you kind of go, well these people are big and they do all this stuff, they're not going to help. Second thing, don't waste an ask. True story, man. Don't waste an ask. If you're going to request a, something of someone else, be prepared. Draft it out. If you're going to submit an article, make sure it's the best article you can write. Make sure it's spell check, ground check. Don't waste it because for sometimes for some people, if you don't have a personal connection, it's it's your first shot. So people are generous. Just believe that people want to help if they can. Don't waste the ask. Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, what's your email? <laughs> uh, becoming minimalist at gmail. Okay. okay. And then uh, the second part is uh, right now I've just been writing in, in a Word document and I've seen a lot of uh, talk on like uh, Scrivener, I think it's called. Yeah. But I was just wondering, like, what do you use to write and what have you found you know, helpful uh, as far as just the, the tools to help you with your writing process, if you use any at all, really? Yeah, I'm I'm not the best person to ask because I'm I'm not that good um, with uh, with tools. Uh, books are a little bit different. Uh, I'll just do blog posts for a yeah. moment. Uh, I use a, um, a program called Ohm O H M something like that, uh, which is great. It's got music, which I uh, which I really find. Literally, this is my process. This is how this is how sexy it is. So I write in Ohm, right, and maybe two thirds of it, three fourths of it. I write till I get stuck. And then I copy it and I put it into WordPress. And, uh, and I, it, there's just something about seeing it there, that, that this is how it's going to look on the, on the screen, and that I'm, I'm close to this. So don't follow my lead, because it's probably bad. So I go, into, I go in there, and, and then that's where I make the, the final, final edits to it. And then uh, this is, uh, yeah, and then my wife edits it. So, <laughs> so that's my wife. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, first I just want to say, like, thank you and thanks to everybody. This is super helpful. It's like, yeah, it's awesome. Great. Um, so I have a question about comments. I, I have a couple questions about comments and things related to comments. So you had mentioned comments and how that, like, helps spurred some stuff for you. Um, so with a lot of the stuff that we write, it's about, like, diversity, identity, race, so it's about topics that are like kind of sensitive and triggered for people, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we turn comments off because we don't want to deal with like the trolls and, and all the stuff that comes along with that. But I also know that a lot of times comments can be a source of like continued sharing and like people to engage. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how to handle that. And then sort of similar, similarly related, we've gotten advice from people about um, taking our blog off of our website. So we, right now we have our blog like embedded in our, in our business website. Um, and of course, a lot of the stuff that we write about is like triggering and controversial and whatever. Um, and so sometimes like the business and the blog gets sort of like blurred and we've gotten emails from people like, how dare you write about this and try and make money off of it. Um, so does like removing the blog from the business like help alleviate some of that? I don't know, my personal philosophy is like haters can hate. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Shake so up. I don't know, just thoughts about comments. Uh, I'll just say this about comments. Um, you set the culture of your blog. Yeah. Like you, you, you will as the writer, or you ought to as the writer, set this is what this community is going to be like. And so I, 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 um, I spam out any curse words. Like if someone comments with a, with a cuss word, like it goes to the spam and it's not that bad, then I'll you know prove it. But typically, I don't. Like I just don't want that language. And typically, it's you know not in a friendly way when it's when it's being used. Or if someone attacks someone else, I'll usually hop on. Hey, did you say that a little bit nicer, you know, or or you know take it off if it's if it's unfair. And I, you set that. And so I think when com when you speak about comments, you know, part of that is is this going to be a community that that talks with one another, or is this going to be a community where I'm speaking and we leave it at that? Um, you just decide. It, it works. I've seen it work both ways, but you, probably the bigger issue is that you set, you set the culture that it is. And I, I don't know how to answer your second one. I, I, I've seen it done both ways. I, I tend to prefer when it's just a standalone blog, um, as opposed to when I go to someone's website and i got to click on blog to get to the one that, that I want to read. Uh, but that's just me. Extra click, which might deter me from <laughs> having to having to get there. So, uh, thanks so much. I'm I'm around. So, if you have any more specific questions, about it, I'm